38 and a half years. Wow. Yeah, I was uh, chief photographer and uh, uh, I hired Bud, Perry, yeah. uh, Pat McGraw, Mike Pinder. John McNeil was the best photographer we ever, ever, ever had. He had the greatest imagination, the greatest eye. He focused on what was going on as far as newspapers were interested in. We were the first newspaper to go completely 35 uh, millimeter format. Uh, we were the first newspaper in Canada to do that. Uh, it's just not a snapshot. Yeah, You pour your thoughts into it, you pour your heart into it. Uh, the story could be told without words uh, in a photograph and it could uh, just display the whole thought of uh, the incident that had uh, was happening right before your eyes sometimes. <laughs> yeah. A lot of air shows, there was one accident uh, that we had uh, uh, here at the North Bay Airport and it was World War II type of an airplane, mm -hmm. uh, an air show at that time and of course there were jets and whatnot, crashed his aircraft there mm -hmm. and we immediately went out to it and uh, covered that story and I went up the next day to the hospital to see the pilot and he was he, he was mangled pretty badly, but he was uh, recovering and he was doing quite well. Uh, our local um, uh, doctors did a wonderful job uh, on putting him back together again. <laughs> Broken bones, you know, basically. And um, everything went down really well, well coordinated. Public relations officers were just bending over backwards to uh, please us, mm -hmm. uh, please the media total and uh, brought us out to the crash site. Now you would never hear of that today. No. Not at all. No. Things have changed so much in every yeah. aspect, right? We covered many, many stories of down, uh, downed aircraft, especially a CF-100 uh, that had crashed out near the fish hatchery. Mm. And it was loaded with uh, rockets and whatnot. And uh, we had uh, a terrible time trying to find it through the bush. It was on top of a hill and it was just in pieces and, sh you know, and the pilot and uh, the uh, navigator were killed in, the, in that. Um, it, knocked out, um, it knocked out the hydro wires and it knocked out the city of North Bay mm. at that time. That was back in the, uh, I believe it was back in the 60s sometime. Being the first photographer to go down into the hole during construction. That's the um, Norad hole. Yeah. And uh, we, uh, there was a newspaper reporter and a photographer, myself, uh, went down there and photographed the whole interior of the uh, notched out area that was uh, going to house the building that uh, the Air Force were, were in at that time, scoping the the northern hemisphere, yeah. if you wish, yes. Unless some entrepreneur comes along with a lot of money, uh, because I, I, I can't see the city of North Bay spending any more tax money on it. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas it would make, uh, uh, it, it would double maintenance uh, is the story today. And of course, any bean counter, if you wish, uh, would uh, dismiss it. And uh, due to the fact that the upkeep and, and organization, getting the uh, people to uh, commit themselves to working there. And uh, not only that, but uh, uh, keeping it alive, keeping the building. There are scalers in there that completely uh, go in there and completely scale the ceilings and whatnot. Uh, there's a constant work job going on in there. Yeah, the tourism value is there, but expensive. Mm -hmm. And that's it in a nutshell. But there is a museum at the airport, at yeah. the airbase itself, and uh, it's run really well. And uh, it uh, does tell many, many stories of uh, the various squadrons that we had. We were in the era of uh, having three to four squadrons here in North Bay. Um, I remember uh, there was an F-5 squadron uh, which was called a Freedom Fighter and it um, 
uh, the squadron came from Quebec, uh, and uh, they were getting their um, uh, they were getting their uh, runway resurfaced, and uh, we had them for uh, quite a period of time. I w I would say the whole summer anyway. They flew us from um, from North Bay to um, Petawawa and they did a combination of forces, uh, Army and Air Force. The F-5s from North Bay went in there and strafed uh, old beat up cars and then what, well, it was a lot of fun to watch and uh, to be there. Uh, <laughs> and I got a lot of different photographs. And the, and the guy that ran that uh, wing at that time was uh, a general, uh, Jack Kadju was his name from North Bay. And uh, he headed that, uh, that uh, group, uh, that wing, and uh, he, uh, we did talk on the inter uh, intercom uh, to him at the time, and he did a little uh, fly pass for us. <laughs> it was very neat, yeah. Uh, those were the days, yeah. We flew from, uh, from here in a helicopter, and it was uh, just like, uh, it was during the days of MASH, if you recall that movie. That yeah, was something else to watch. <laughs> but, uh, oh, yeah, we had all the quips and uh, answers to different questions uh, because we were totally uh, immersed in the Korean War at that time and what they did do. Uh, and uh, the MASH unit was uh, very, very funny. <laughs> yeah. Plane crashes and, and um, explosions. Uh, Pipeline explosions, my God. <laughs> we have certainly earned our pay in those things. <laughs> uh, there's rocks flying all over Hell's Half Acre, and uh, it was uh, an amazing. The next day was uh, just a, a, a complete desert of fine, fine roasted rock, if you can believe that. And you could almost pick it up with your hand uh, after it cooled off, uh, and it was light. It, so all the minerals in the in the rock were just boiled right off. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. And that was the uh, pipeline explosion up. Uh, yeah, there was a couple of them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I worked for the pipeline uh, many years ago when they were installing it, and uh, on the uh, part time actually uh, uh, a spread from um, Martin River to South River. Uh, that was by. Um, uh, one was Bechtel and the other was Majestic and uh, I worked for uh, one of the big companies that uh, I'd forgotten that was back in the 50s. I bought my first car mm -hmm. with the money I made from that. <laughs> you started out as a graphic artist. Eh? Graphic artist, yeah. I went to school uh, um, in Quebec. Uh, I went to uh, an art school in Quebec back in the early days. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to mention it. <laughs> Uh, it, it was en français, um, it was connected with Lo Loyola, Loyola University, okay. yeah. yeah, it was connected with them at yeah. the time. You're a renowned cartoonist. I did that too, <laughs> yeah, I had a lot of fun doing that. I ended up, after retiring from the newspaper, after doing so many years of, of editorial cartoons, that, uh, we used to put our heads together and come up with some answers of uh, and, and turn it into a comedy, of course, and it had to. Mm -hmm. And I would have three days' notice to do it, yeah. <laughs> make sure that everything was, uh, you know, on point. But yeah, I worked for Lynn Johnson too for a few years. Yeah, she was an awesome, awesome lady. 1993. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That uh, was that was the closing date. And uh, it was a sad day. It really was. It was uh, a day that uh, I'll never forget. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it, but you know what? Uh, it, it's uh, in the long run, it's been a favor. And in the shortfall of it, it's uh, it was something that I loved doing. So. I, I, I can't express that any other way other than the fact that I enjoyed every minute of it. I enjoyed every minute of the nugget, but it uh, it was a job, but it was a job that you were willing every morning to get up and do. 
And if you can have that type of job, wow, you've got it made. Yeah. That's the key. That's the key, yeah. <laughs> sort of finding out what your skills are, making them the best, and then putting them to use. Yes, exactly, yeah. In the right spot with the right people. That's right, yeah. People that uh, know. <laughs> and uh, it's, uh, well, <laughs> One of the favorite expressions that I, I remember, uh, uh, let's say at, at five o'clock when we were out of, out of the office, we'd open the door and shout out, it's been a wonderful thing working with a bunch of professionals. <laughs> and you snuck out after that. <laughs> yeah, Bobby Breesaw and I used to say that all the time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, the family is right. Uh, that's the right word. Uh, we enjoyed, um, gosh, uh, great and wonderful newspaper people. I, I, I consider myself extremely lucky uh, to have worked with those people and who have enjoyed their company. We had a lot of, a lot of fun. And uh, I can remember Jack Granger saying to us, as long as you're having fun. And, and we had some great editors. Uh, wow, uh, Mort Feldman was, and Britt Jessup. Wow. They, Tell the, me more about Britt. Oh, Britt? Yeah, yeah. Britt, uh, Britt was a World War II veteran uh, who flew uh, um, a, a, the aircraft. It was called, it was a wimpy. It was a two-engine bomber, and he worked for the. Uh, he was with the RAF at the time, even though, um, even though Brit uh, uh, was Canadian and whatnot. Some of these Canadians, of course, had a, had belonged to Bomber Squadron, Bomber Harris's outfit, and uh, that was a story in itself. Uh, and Brit ended up uh, after the war coming to the Nugget, and. Um, he was hired on uh, in the 40s. Uh, he continued on as, as, as a sports editor at the time, but he became um, um, a um, managing editor at one, uh, t towards the end of his uh, tenure. Uh, and uh, talk about fun. Boy, oh boy, we <laughs> knocked the ball over the fence many times. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. And in those days, people counted, absolutely counted on any uh, anything that went on. Uh, we covered everything, every darn thing you could think of, to little peewee hockey, peewee hockey, to uh, pro hockey, to uh, peewee baseball, peewee soccer, peewee football. All, all the way through college, all the way through uh, uh, high school stuff, and uh, had a great time. One of the best photographers that did, and you worked with them, They're Dennis. Uh, yeah, Dennis and Paul. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you guys uh, were lucky to have them. Yeah. Both of them. Oh, they were pros. Yeah, the, those guys were just. And it was like handing the baton, if you wish, you know. And uh, the baton was handed over to those guys, and they just carried on and ran with it. And uh, as far as technology, and of course, I, I, <laughs> I was from uh, the, uh, uh, we used to call the uh, dark room the soup kitchen where you went in and souped your film. And uh, we don't have that anymore. Uh, that's gone forever. And uh, uh, today it's uh, anybody with a cell phone could photograph a scene. For instance, we would have loved to have that in our day um, to be able to uh, be on site of a incident, whatever may happen, uh, and uh, photograph it, and press another button, and it's back to the office, yeah. and it's almost to a stage where it can be printed. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's immediate response. Immediate. I I believe part of that in the film day was uh, started back in. Uh, 1988, when um, the uh, Olympics happened, the Winter Olympics, uh, everything was wire photoed with film in those days. Wow. Wire photoed. So the inspiration went from there, you know. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, it was a lot of fun. Gosh, gee whiz, we, we had enormous amounts of fun. And the technology just, just kept coming and coming and coming. Wow. I covered a football game in, uh, in um, Hamilton. It was 1972. It was a great cup game. And uh, <laughs> Hamilton won. Uh, I believe they were playing Saskatchewan. And uh, anyway, I went over to the Hamilton Spectator after that because I, f I photographed uh, some North Bayites sitting in the stands. They, I knew that they'd be there. Yeah. And uh, I went up and uh, up in the stands and photographed these guys, <laughs> having a f great time. And uh, I sent it to the Nugget. I went over to the Spectator, the Hamilton Spectator, and um, uh, wire photoed everything to them and uh, to the Nugget. And uh, and they ran it that, uh, well, the next day, I guess. Yeah. You can say we had the pleasure, and it was a pleasure of having a part-time goaltender and photographer yeah. work for us for one year, or for one season. And his name was Dennis Brodeur. Yeah, very nice. Dennis yeah. Brodeur, uh, Martin Brodeur's father. Yeah, yeah. He worked for us. He was an awesome, funny, funny guy. He was just... And, and to this day, I, I, I used to get tickets once in a while to hockey games in Montreal. I'd take my boy and we'd uh, go to the game. Who do we meet? Dennis Brodeur. <laughs> and his, one of his sons was a photographer also. But one of his children were, was born in North Bay. I believe it was the, his daughter. But Dennis was just a ball. He, he was, he, every word that came out of his mouth was inspiring, you might say. <laughs> he came from uh, the Kitchener uh, Dutchman at the time. And uh, he... Um, he played for us. Uh, uh, I think uh, I think my cousin Pete Palangio had uh, had the team at, in those days. It was the Trappers, the Senior A team, mm -hmm. and uh, those were non-professional, haha. -ha. But uh, <laughs> in order for these people to get side jobs and and pay them, uh, Dennis, for for instance, it was paid uh, a paid uh, operator of a camera. Photographer, he was a paid photographer, and uh, we we filled in the gap uh, between what he was making in North Bay and, and uh, at the with the trappers and uh, ourselves. Oh, that's real cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are the days. <laughs> Generally, uh, it's just the days gone by, and they've gone by quickly. Mm -hmm. um, to maybe a little anecdote, if you wish would be to um, say, if you're having an early retirement, go for it. Because life after that is a gift. There's nothing, uh, there's no gifts stretching out a career. Mm -hmm. Not at all. Uh, what do you gain from it? Not very much.